good morning. We welcome you to First United Methodist Church on this, well, it's slightly gray uh, uh, Sunday morning, our fourth Sunday in Advent, December 22nd. Thank you all for being here. I know sometimes on days like this, it's, you have to think twice about whether you want to get out in the weather, you're looking at the radar, but we're glad that you are here. Uh, glad that you are a part of this fellowship, and if you're visiting with us today, we're particularly honored that you have come and are a part of this church family as we worship together. Know that you're welcome every time and any time that we gather for worship here in this beautiful sanctuary. Uh, for all of you, in your bulletins, you'll find a Connect card. I hope that you will take the time to fill that out. This is how we keep up that you are here, uh, whether you're new here or you're here every single week. I hope that you will complete that and get it into the offering plates when they're passed later in the service. Uh, on the back, you'll see ways that you can get connected to this congregation. And, and if you are interested in those areas that you're not already connected, you can let us know and we'll have a chance to follow up with you. Also in your bulletins, you're going to find a calendar of events and all of the announcements of things that are going on. Of particular note, of course, is our Christmas Eve services that you will see there in the middle of the inside of your bulletin. In just a couple days on Tuesday night, we will have a chance to gather back here. Uh, we'll have three services on Tuesday on Christmas Eve here in the sanctuary, both at 4 p.m. and at 7 p.m. We will have our traditional Christmas Eve service uh, with our wonderful choir. We'll, we'll sing Silent Night with candlelight. We'll share Holy Communion. Uh, and we hope for before, if you're coming to one of or either of those services, uh, 20 minutes before that service, we hope you'll come early because uh, we'll have a special organ and piano recital, uh, one that starts at 3.40 and another that starts at 6.40. And so if you're planning to come to those services, we hope you will come early and allow uh, our wonderful musicians uh, to uh, draw us into Christ's presence as we celebrate together that evening. And at 5.30 p.m., in between those, we have our contemporary service in the Family Life Center uh, with our kids singing once again there. And, and the praise band, again, before that service, they'll be uh, offering some special music. And so if you're coming to the 5.30 uh, as well, you can come a little bit early uh, and enjoy a special blessing with that music. Uh, most of the other things in our bulletin are pointing us to the new year, and those are important. I won't take a lot of time with that, but you'll have a special insert with our discipleship offerings for the winter months. Uh, you can begin signing up for those. Uh, our church-wide vision day is on Saturday, January 11th, uh, from 9 to noon in our Family Life Center, and a, a lunch that follows if you'd like to stay, as well as a new member orientation on January 12th. Uh, I've updated all of that stuff on our website and corrected a few problems with some links, and so uh, one of the easiest ways to sign up for these classes or for uh, any of the things in the new year is online through our website. Uh, but you can also call the church office at any time um, and uh, get connected to those opportunities as well, recognizing, of course, that this coming week uh, our office is only open uh, tomorrow on Monday. Uh, but we do hope as the year begins that you will uh, find deeper connection to the life and ministry of this congregation. Um, I think that's all I wanted to lift up. I do hope you'll keep your bulletins. Uh, it's one of the best ways to keep up with the things going on in our church each week. As we enter into this time of worship together this morning, we know we gathered just a couple days before Christmas Eve. We are still in the season of Advent, still looking at ways that we can make room in our lives and our families and all that we're doing for Christ to be born once more. And so as our prelude is played, I invite you to prepare yourself uh, for the work that we do this hour as we lift our prayers to God, as we sing our praises to God, as we hear God's, read words, God's word read and proclaimed. Let us worship together. Thank you. 
our service with the lighting of our Advent wreath and invite the Hyde family uh, to come. Jeff and Lisa, Jacob home from choir, Wesley and Seth, and our own Pastor Ann to start us off with the introit. She doesn't do solos. This is going to be a joyous way to enter. It's going to be beautiful. I've been listening to your practice. Light the Advent candle for the infant Jesus. Keep the candle burning in your heart. A tiny king is coming, this little child will lead us. Light the Advent candle in your heart. given enough? Are there enough gifts under the tree, in the mail, passed around the office, shared in gatherings and among friends? Why are we giving gifts? Because we feel we have to or because we want to? These are good questions. Let's turn to scripture, listen to verses from Psalm 116. The Lord is merciful and righteous. Our God is compassionate. The Lord protects the simple folk. He saves me whenever I am brought down. I tell myself, you can be at peace again because the Lord has been good to you. What can I give back to the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I'll call on the Lord's name. I'll keep my promises I made to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Oh yes, Lord. I am definitely your servant, so I'll offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to you, and I'll call on the Lord's name. I'll keep the promises I made to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Giving more isn't about giving more and more things. It isn't about taking on too much and trying to do it all by ourselves. God gives us so much, more than we can ask or imagine. And God shows us that giving more is about offering our faithful, trusting yes to him each and every day. God asks us to give more of our hearts so that we can do the, his will in and through our lives. We light the fourth Advent candle as Christmas comes close. We commit to give more and make room for our yes to Jesus Christ. And if the congregation will respond with us. God of grace, in this holy season, help us to make room for you. You give us all we need to flourish as your people. Inspire us to give more of our heart to you and to others with the confident yes. Amen. We are so grateful to the Hyde family. Uh, they bless our church in many ways, and to have Wesley and Seth working today also as Crucifer and Acolyte. We now share together in song as we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Advent. Our hymn is Once in Royal David City. It's found on page 250 in your hymnals. I invite you to stand as we sing together.
using the Apostles' Creed found on page 881 in the back of your hymnals. Let us affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us take a few moments and share the peace and love of Jesus Christ with those around us. Did you a good job. That, your voice is so pure and sweet. I was told our ushers were coming down with reindeer antlers. I'm a little uh, disappointed we didn't have the whole team come down. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> we do worship God with the giving of our tithes and our offerings, recognizing the gifts we have in our life that come from God. And this is just one of the many ways that we express our thanks and our gratitude and support the work of God's kingdom and mission in our world. And so let us pray together as we prepare to worship God in this way. O giver of all good gifts, we pray that you would bless the offering that we make this morning. It's a small token to all of the blessings that you have poured down upon us. Lord, into our human weakness, you gave the greatest gift of all, Emmanuel, your presence with us in Jesus Christ. And not just a presence, but an invitation through him to be your children and heirs to your kingdom. And so may our gifts and the hymns that we sing and our prayers we offer and the promises we make help us Realize that kingdom in our hearts and in our world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
join our hearts together in prayer this morning. As we come to worship, I know we bring our own concerns, things happening in our lives, in our family members and friends, and other situations that we know, and we bring that with us to worship, to offer to God, for God's healing, for God's blessing, for God's strength. In your bulletins, we do have our prayer list. Uh, We keep this updated, and we want to hold uh, these members of our church family in our prayers each and every day. We lift them up in a special way and worship now. We also, uh, as you'll see a couple notes there, our uh, prayers are with Terry and Todd Adams and their family upon the death of her father, Larry Mayhew, on December 13th. Uh, there will be a service for both Larry and Sally uh, early in the new year, and we'll share more of that, of that service information uh, in just a few weeks. And our beautiful altar flowers this morning uh, work so well with our poinsettias. Uh, beautiful uh, blessing on our worship together t- today. Those are in loving memory of Karen, Karen Pennington and her husband Gary and their children. Uh, many of you are here today. Thank you uh, for sharing this memory with us and, and blessing us. Uh, and remembering her in a special way. Uh, and you see the, the family there uh, by her husband Gary, children, Brittany and Lindsay, David and Christy, and the grandchildren. Uh, so again, thank you. I'll invite you now, if you will, join me as we go to God in prayer. O Lord God of love, you came as a light to the world, and you breathe new life and healing and salvation into our lives. Lord, in this time of worship, may we be open to your promises and to your love. As we come this morning, so many people tired from rushing around, tired of trying to meet the demands and the expectations of this season, we pray that you would slow us down. As we worship you, help us to center our thoughts, our spirits in you. May we receive the life that you give us. May we truly encounter you as Emmanuel, as God with us. And Lord, we do confess that we are rushing headlong into Christmas. It's only two days away and we still have so much to do. Our preparation's far from complete. Lord, and many of us are exhausted. Where we found the slippery slope of this Christmas season where we think we have it all together and then it gets away from us and we feel out of control. We've cluttered our lives and our schedules with so much that we barely have time to breathe. We plan, we prepare, we cook, we clean, and yet wind up drained. And we confess that sometimes we wonder what in the world has happened to the joyous Christmas that we had so long ago. Lord, for some of us, we catch ourselves wishing this whole thing were over so that we could get some rest. Lord, we pray that you would forgive our shortcomings, that you would forgive our short-sightedness, that you would forgive us when we forget how you have poured upon us blessing after blessing, daily reminding us of your love and in your, ple- and your, and your presence. So Lord, in this place, And on this day, you have called us together to hear your words of encouragement, to remind us that you are with us, and we pray that you would give us patience. We pray that you would remind us of the ways that you are present with us, and not just in the wrapped packages and in the abundance of food, but in the love and the compassion that is brought to all. It would make us truly ready to receive your love and the gift of the Christ child. Make us truly ready to be witnesses to that love right here among us right now. Lord, open our hearts and help us proclaim your presence. Help us to reach out to one another 
in joy and in peace. And Lord, as we have brought our, all of our concerns to you in our prayers, remind us again that you hold each and every one of us gently and lovingly in your constant care. For we thank you for your love. And we ask these things in the name of the one whom you sent to heal and free us, Jesus Christ our Lord. And Lord, together we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we prepare to hear God's word read and proclaimed, we share together once more in song. It's hymn number 221, In the Bleak Midwinter. It's always fun to sing this hymn when you live in Florida, uh, but Pastor Ann wants to remind us that she's actually from Massachusetts, and so this is very appropriate, but it's also such a beautiful hymn that draws us into the heart of this season. So if you would stand as you are able and let us sing together. That is one of my favorite hymns. It was uh, written by a Victorian poet, Christina Rossetti, and my specialization as a college English major was uh, the Victorian era, so it has that appeal uh, to me as well. And there's something about it, I think, too, that 
kind of sums up my personality. <laughs> In the bleak midwinter, right, David? <laughs> right. Uh, well, you know, I, I like a hearty dose of melancholy with my joy as well. Um, let us be um, in a spirit of prayer as we prepare to hear God's word for us today. Let us pray. Oh, loving God, we have paused in this season of Advent to listen to you. We ask that you would draw near and whisper into our hearts the word that you would have us receive today. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your word made flesh, who came to dwell among us, full of grace and truth. Amen. So, as we've been saying, our invitation this Advent is to make room for Jesus. Another way of saying this is that um, in this season of Advent, we are looking to find ways to make room in our human lives for God's love. Because really, that is what Jesus is all about. He is the incarnation, the making flesh of God's love, and the invitation of Advent is to make room for that in our lives, in our very human lives. But as we've been asking ourselves, um, in one of the busiest times of year, how do you create the space needed uh, to bring Jesus more fully into your heart and into your life? This short sermon series has been all about strategies to try and help us make room for God's love in Jesus in our hearts and in our lives. And so uh, a few weeks back, we learned that um, to make room uh, for Jesus, we can worship fully. That worship really does clear a space in our lives for the presence of Jesus and then also a few weeks ago, we um, talked about spending less. <laughs> and uh, we learned that when you take away the distraction or the preoccupation on all of the stuff um, of Christmas, that uh, lo and behold, some room is made for Jesus and his power and his presence in our lives and in our heart. Today, we are going to learn about giving more. At first glance, this strategy to give more, to make room by giving more, this may sound like a contradiction to spend less. And with Christmas just days away, we might legitimately feel that the last thing we can do or that we would want to do is to give more. I think... Uh, David in the prayer said it well. We're just basically ready to, to kind of call it quits, put our feet up, and maybe enjoy some rest. And if I say that uh, one of the strategies to make room for Jesus in our lives and in our hearts is to um, give more, that might have you uh, wanting to run for the door. <laughs> um, but stay seated um, because I'm thinking that giving more might not be exactly what we um, might assume it means. And I think that's our task today, is to um, look at what give more means for us. And in order to do that, we first need to visit Scripture. And so we're going to read Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. And this is a um, spectacular moment uh, in Scripture, where the angel Gabriel visits Mary with the invitation to bear the Christ child. Um, and you'll hear Elizabeth referred to. Elizabeth was Mary's cousin, and she had been barren, infertile, and she too, miraculously, is expecting a child. So let's um, listen in uh, and this conversation between Gabriel, the angel, and Mary. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, 
to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Look, even in her old age, in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman, who was labeled unable to conceive, is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. Now this is a very powerfully revealing moment because you see in this exchange between the angel Gabriel and Mary, we discover that God has an intense desire. God wants to give more to us. God wants to give more to humanity. God wants to give more to creation. You see, God wants to give more to us than the gift of simply creating us, giving the gift of being. And God wants to give more to us than the gift of simply sustaining us through his care and providence. God wants to give us something more, even more than those great blessings. God wants to give us the gift of flesh and blood, a flesh and blood relationship with each and every one of us. God wants to be with us as one of us. This is the something more. God wants to be with us as one of us. And in order to give this something more to us, God, in turn, asks Mary to give more, too. The angel asks Mary to give nothing less than herself, to give her body, her heart, her life, her energy, her resources, so that God's saving love might become real, might become flesh and blood in Jesus. The angel asks Mary to give herself to God in a real flesh and blood relationship as Jesus' mother. And when Mary says, yes, God draws close. He draws close in a very specific way, a historical way, and a deeply personal way. The infinite God who made heaven and earth, who creates us and sustains us, that infinite God in Jesus becomes more tangible. In the flesh and blood of Jesus, God becomes more approachable, 
more knowable. God has a face. The infinite God now has a face in Jesus. He now has a voice in Jesus. In Jesus, God lives with real people and experiences the fullness of humanity. So as we look at this encounter and this desire of God to give more and Mary's giving more, what does this teach us about the meaning for us? What does it mean for us to give more? Both God and Mary show us that to give more simply means to give ourselves to one another in flesh and blood relationships. We realize that our world is an increasingly fragmented and fractured one. It's full of busyness, not just at this time of year, but all year round. We are more and more dependent on technology. We are more and more dependent on technology, especially the busier that we are, to provide convenient, quick, and easy connection with one another through cell phone calling, texting, forms of social media, and live streaming video. Now, these aren't bad in and of themselves. In fact, they are quite helpful and quite necessary. They are important ways that we can reach out and keep in touch with people, especially with those who do not live nearby and those who cannot connect in person regularly due to a variety of circumstances. Yet these technologically supported ways of relating to one another cannot replace the flesh and blood aspects of relationship because God made us to be with each other physically. We want to see each other's faces. We want to hear one another's voices. We want to hold each other's hands. We want to enjoy meals with one another. We want to share experiences of wonder and beauty or fun with one another. And even in those times when no adequate words can be said and nothing can be done, we want the physical presence of each other. Because it is then that we remember that we are not alone. The conscious giving of ourselves in the flesh through attention, time, energy, and presence, all of that is not new, but it is often neglected. We tend to get caught up with many less important things in our lives. We tend to have too much to do. Sometimes we burden our relationships with expectations, imagined or real, and we avoid or resist these relationships because they ask so much of us. Or sometimes, as David said in the the prayer, we're simply tired and we experience our various relationships as obligations to meet rather than blessings to receive. This fourth week of Advent reminds us that the miracle of Christmas is flesh and blood love. Flesh and blood love of divine love and human love mixed together, first in Jesus himself and then secondly in our lives through his presence. It is flesh and blood love, that mixture of divine love and human love that will save the world. There is not anything greater that God could give to us than flesh and blood love. There wasn't anything more that Mary could have given than that flesh and blood love. There isn't anything more then we can give to one another as well as to God 
than our flesh and blood love. I experienced this flesh and blood kind of love a lot these last two weeks. And I'm an introvert. I, I, I love people, but I can get kind of exhausted by um, social interaction. And sometimes I can fall into the trap of saying, oh, I've got to go out again, or I've got to go see this person, or I've got to go do that. And I think even if you're an extrovert, sometimes that can feel that way, where you just feel a little bit overwhelmed with the people that you need to see and interact with, um, especially ones in a meaningful way. But I had to remind myself, and I was repeatedly reminded um, this week, these past two weeks, as I went to these things, that I was experiencing that blessing of flesh and blood love. We saw that flesh and blood love in the choir, giving of themselves last week in our beautiful Christmas cantata. Of all the rehearsing they did, all of the practicing and the offering of their gifts and graces and their heart, they gave more. We saw flesh and blood love, too, over at the 9 o'clock service in the program that the children offered. I saw flesh and blood love when I went to the Windsor, um, our assisted living facility. We went to the Windsor to provide Holy Communion to folks who live there. And even after Holy Communion was over, we just sat around the table and talked. Flesh and blood love. I experienced it also in the laughter of the sisters in service Christmas gathering at the Ivy House and in the fellowship of the Friends Sunday School class at Mark and Jean Imes House. I experienced flesh and blood love and the celebratory Christmas lunches that we had with our district staff and our church staff. I experienced flesh and blood love in just the kind of supportive chatting in the church office break room in between all the goings on. And even on a drive home from Gainesville, there it was. I was driving um, at sunset across Payne's Prairie on 441. And it was just absolutely beautiful. And instead of just driving by, people were pulling their cars over and stopping. It was so breathtaking. And they didn't stay in their cars. They wanted to experience this moment of wonder and beauty in the flesh and blood relationships with other people, with complete strangers. In that moment of awe, they were all lined up on the side of the road. Yes, cameras were out, but they were looking at the sky, looking at each other, experiencing flesh and blood love. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, an angel comes to you and taps you on the shoulder. An angel of God comes into your life and asks you whether you will say yes to giving more this Christmas. Will you give more of yourself to the flesh and blood relationships of your lives? Ask yourself who needs your time and attention this year? Who needs the gift of your presence? Who needs a tangible expression of your care and your love? Who this Christmas needs to see your face, hear your voice, and hold your hand? The angels of opportunity are all around us. In every flesh and blood relationship that we have, even the ones that we have with strangers who will cross our path, and these angels of opportunity ask us to give more of ourselves 
so that there is more room for God's flesh and blood love to be born in this world, in the real relationships of our lives. Because you see, God's desire is the same as it was when he first approached Mary. God wants to be more tangible. God wants to be more approachable. God wants to be more knowable and personal through you. Will you say yes? Let us pray. O God of flesh and blood love, thank you for drawing close to us in Jesus Christ. We pray that you would give us your grace to say yes. Enable us to give more the gift of our very selves, our presence to one another so that all in our lives, our loved ones, those closest to us, those in our neighborhoods, in our community, and even strangers might glimpse in us the face of your love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, found on page 218 of your hymnal. As you are able, will you please rise and sing. blessing of seeing your faces hopefully on Christmas Eve. And we hope that as you go forth into this afternoon that you will be safe, that you will be well, 
and that you will experience the joy of presence, the gift of time and attention and love toward one another. May you go forth in the grace of God, in the peace of Jesus Christ, and in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And all the children of God said, Amen. Amen.